It's, it's Oogie Boogie time! Hey, ma'am, fam, we're here in Disneyland for Oogie Boogie Bash. This is Disneyland's specialty ticketed Halloween event taking place at Disney California Adventure. It's got a bunch of characters, parade, treats, and Alan and I have never been. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go! Come in your Moses Goobies news. I'm not gonna have a voice after that's tonight. That's true. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's accurate. That's true. Oogie that's... Boogie! Wow. Now, as we said, Oogie Boogie Bash is the specialty ticketed Halloween event here at Disneyland, and it does take place in Disney California Adventure. This event is incredibly popular. In fact, tonight is already sold out, but don't you worry, if you're here without a ticket to Oogie Boogie, there's plenty of Halloween fun to be had. We are actually putting out a new video soon about all of those festivities. Tonight, though, we're going to focus on everything Oogie Boogie Bash, from the characters to the parades to the shows to the food. We have got you covered. Now, the Oogie Boogie Bash event does begin at 6 p.m. and end at 11 p.m. However, your Oogie Boogie Bash ticket does get you into the park at 3 p.m. So you do have some time to get in a little bit early, eat some other treats, ride some other rides, and just have fun in the park before the event actually starts. Also, Monsters After Dark, the Halloween overlay of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, also opens at 3 p.m. So if you want to get some Halloween fun in before the event starts, make sure you check out Monsters After Dark. Shot a few very necessary reels in our Hades Pain and Panic costumes. Uh, we, we are worms! Worthless worms! Memo to me. Memo to me. Maim you after my meeting. And now we're taking our own advice and headed to Monsters After Dark prior to the party officially beginning. As a pro tip, if you've purchased Genie Plus for your day in Disneyland, you can use it up until the party starts at 6 o'clock. There's no lightning lanes available once the party starts, but if you're coming in before the party, you can use Genie Plus. And don't forget, here in Disneyland, purchasing Genie Plus means you also get all of your photo pass pictures for the day. So if you take pictures during the day or during Oogie Boogie, you'll have access to those included with Genie Plus. Guardians of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark is the Halloween overlay here at Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. It's a little bit spookier, scarier version. Instead of coming to see the collector's collection, which features the Guardians and helping them break out, unfortunately the monsters have broken out this time, and Rocket is recruiting you to be live bait. You gotta distract those monsters away from cute little baby Groot uh, to help him escape, but good luck to you, I guess. Remember, if you see a scary creature, Scream real loud and look delicious. fun way to kick off the night a delightful overlay and do recommend riding this before the event starts this and several other attractions things in cars land pixar pier avengers campus are all open during the party but you want to maximize your party time there's not lightning lane available during the party but it is a limited capacity event so you'll probably see ride times are a little bit lower than normal and there are Halloween overlays over in Cars Land, not at Radiator Springs Racers, but the other two. Uh, but again, those are open from the 3 to 6 period as well. What do you guys think now? Maybe a character? Party has gotten started. Spooky snack? Character? Ooh. I'll never turn down a spooky snack. Good point. We know that's true. Now, if you are a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party regular, something that may be a little bit different for you is Oogie's use of treat trails. This is where you're going to find most of the characters during this event. There are some standard character meet and greets, but a lot of the characters that are out that are unique for the event, you will find specifically on these treat trails. You're still going to get your normal candy, use the bag that you got when you entered, but you're gonna line up and go through. It's not, you're not gonna stop and see each character individually and take a photo, but they're there for you to interact with. You can take a selfie, get a little bit of video, and stop by quickly to say hello. These tree trails do tend to get pretty busy, depending on how popular the character is and the hours of the park. My pro tip, go during first parade and then watch your second parade for any of those characters that you're really excited about. Lines tend to get shorter as the night goes on, and I have experience that you're able to see all of them throughout the evening if you're trying to. Right now, we are in Avengers Campus, and our first tree trail of the night, Agatha Harkness. 
I've heard it was her all along. They're coffee M&Ms. Chill. Well, things went a little blessed, you could say. Yes, some of us were just born to stand on our own for Then I'm the neighbor to the right. Not your right, my right, just to clarify. Oh, adorable. Magic. Now, Hades, I'm glad you joined us above ground. Yes, we can put you to work. You can take our board. <laughs> are these Mickey Mouse goldfish? Yes, they are. Oh my gosh, thank you. Of course, enjoy. thank you. All right, so as Orlando, not so scary natives, first time at Boogie Boogie, what are your thoughts on the tree tree? First of all, it was Agatha all along it because was. she's a delight. Also, talk about efficient. Wow. I got in, wow. got what I wanted, some candy, a nice interaction with Agatha. A couple selfies. Listen, villain recognized villain, you know? Yeah, game recognized game. And on the tree trail, there were so many stops in there. There were not only candy, where they gave me a bunch of the coffee M&Ms, my new fave, but they also had apple slices, goldfish, like more than just candy. First tree trail, so fast, so efficient. That would have been a multi-hour line and not so scary. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Up next, we are headed to the Disney Junior Dance Party Theater to watch Mickey's Trick and Treat. Now, we've heard that this show is often something skipped by adults, but it's pretty cute, so we want to go see what it is. Also, this is a great show to go see at the start of the party when the lines are really long. I'm excited. All right, what we think? That was so cute. I love Mickey and Minnie as ghosts. I also like Donald when at one point he was turned around and just shaking his tail feathers. Yeah. Oh yeah. He also locked himself in the bars like a cage at one point because he was trapped. It was cute. I don't think that that needs to be a must see for most people, but it was really cute. It was short, like 15 minutes. You've got kids definitely, but it was nice to be able to see the classic characters without having to like wait in their lives. Also, oh, yeah. they had different costumes than they normally have when they appear out in the park. Goofy was a mummy. It was very cute. It's cute. Headed on our next tree trail. This is one of two new villains at Oogie this year, Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And my fear is that he's gonna have the dip. You can tell we're in Judge Doom's area by all this poseon and eye acme eyeballs and other mysterious looking barrels. This looks so cool. This is a good one to wait for nightfall for sure. 5,000 gallons of heated dip. Enough to wipe Toon Town off the face of the earth. This is how we do things down in Toon Town. But the only way to rein in the lunacy is for these tombs, like this one, to respect the law. Justice is served. That got real dark real fast. Did we just watch a murder? Yes. Yeah, a, sh a shoe murder, but a murder nonetheless. A murder. Murder. Y'all want some cheese on a stick? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do yeah. Like yeah. yeah let's get that. On our way to pick up our first Snicky snack and saw this cute Hocus Pocus photo op. I love that it's got Thackeray Binks and the spell, and then it's got two brooms and a vacuum. Adorable. We're not stopping though, because we have snacks on the brain. But speaking of Hocus Pocus and the Sanderson sisters, yes, you can meet Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle dressed as the Hocus Pocus characters. 
We're not gonna do that though. They are something that tends to get a pretty long line, at least an hour usually during the event. There's also some other stand around traditional characters like Kingdom Hearts, Mickey or Donald, maybe Goofy. There's Bruno. And if we have time, maybe we'll see some of these, but we're definitely focused on the treat trails and more exclusive things. But also stay tuned, because Alan and I may be going somewhere soon where we can see the Sanderson sisters. Well, the Chaos Twins got cheese on a stick, which is pretty par of the course. But I picked up the seasonal treat. Now, this is not a party exclusive. It is the spicy beef and pepper jack cheese corn dog with blackberry sauce and topped with pickled serranos. All right, cheers. Hmm. First of all, corn dogs are excellent. You get some heat, it's some light heat on the tongue. I would even say for, the, for those of you who are spice averse, this is still very tolerable. The blackberry sauce, very tasty, not super sweet. I'm loving being able to skewer a little Serrano. Mm. Oh wow, there's a pepper jack cheese. It's like there's a layer of hot dog and then pepper jack cheese and they layer it on the, on the skewer. This is good. Next stop on the treat trail to-do list is visiting so funny. every toy's nightmare, Sid. Down here on Pixar Pier, you can find the villain from the original Toy Story, the one that is known to blow up his toys, to torture them on a grill, to make toy concoctions of pieces of other toys, Sid. A feature at Oogie Boogie Bash. What are you panicking about? Nothing like the ravings of a deranged child, really. I don't need to hear about the double bypass required to make baby face. Let me just say. Has oh. his parents, like, checked on him? Clearly, no! He should have to have a chaperone to be here. Yeah. But he did just roast everybody in line, which is really funny. Yeah, that, that was good. That was a cool interaction. Also, that was definitely the longest one we've been in so far, but it, it was still, we were in and out in, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, it didn't take that long. I love the tree trail situation. <sighs> Headed now into San Francisco Square to meet one of the new villains gracing Oogie Boogie Bash, Yokai from Big Hero 6. I won't stop until I take everything from him. And I will not let anything stand in my way. And if that makes me a villain, so be it. Now, we took advantage of the first parade to see some of those characters, to get in some of those lines while other folks might be watching that parade. Now that it is done, we have headed across the street to the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, where they have a very unique offering for a Boogie Bash called Villain's Grove. Now this offering only becomes available once the sun is down and it's dark out because it is a light and projection display all through the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. They do different displays for the different villains. For instance, we might find some red roses for the Queen of Hearts in here. Maybe we'll even perk our noses up because it might smell like them too. But it is an incredibly unique offering for Oogie Boogie Bash, not like anything at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I'm super excited for Molly and Alan to see it for the first time. I'm very excited. I am also very excited. I think it looks rather dashy. Looks fun.
That was gorgeous. I cried a little bit. <laughs> yeah. This isn't the event I thought I'd cry at, but okay. I mean, was it spooky in parts? Absolutely. But the effects, incredible. Yeah. The ending is beautiful. It literally like shocked me and, and brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> I think it's just such a unique wow. offering for an event like this. Using a space that otherwise might just sit empty in a super new way that, I mean, I don't know. I just don't have enough good things to say about it all. And you do keep moving throughout the trail, but go slowly because you can hear different notes of the music from whatever villain you're in. There's lots of little details. The projections, like the projection of the Cheshire Cat was really cool. Obviously, I love the hyenas. No notes. That was awesome. All right. To a villain. To a villain. To a villain. <coughs> um, Molly. Yeah. I'm just curious. Given the density of bears, uh, both here and in Knott's Berry Farm, is this also a bear-themed park? It is. And also, you're telling me you wouldn't want to give this guy a hug? Look at him. He's so cute. He's got his little pumpkin bucket. He's just just make sure. Bring your Charmin. Bring your no. teddy, bear picnic. teddy bear picnic. No. Bring Charmin. Just bring no. Bring the right things. Do not bring no. the bear to you a paper. hug a bear. No. Treat him nice. No. Right? Real do you advice. Real do you see his canines? Advice. Totally real Take advice. this advice. Do it. Hug bears. Give them toilet paper. If you give them a teddy bear picnic. Charmin. For legal reasons, don't hug bears. I don't know why I have to say that. Just don't do that. They're wild animals. Headed on another tree trail to find the scariest thing in this land. No, that's not chafing after a water ride. It's Mother Gothel from Tangled. I've never seen her before. She's awesome. Oh. I would never lie. <laughs> never. What purpose would that serve? Let me know if you are. Mother do his best. <laughs> And now for a throwback to one of my favorite films, The Sword in the Stone, because we're meeting the marvelous Mad Madame Mim, best known for her wizard's duel with Merlin, where she may or may not have broken the rules. All right, well, in a show of villainy, she has captured Archimedes, Look at the detail. Merlin's owl. The, the rhino and stuff over oh, the top right. and down at the bottom. All of these things are from the conflict between the wizard's duel that Mad Madame Mim and Merlin had, where she eventually turned into a dragon, which was against the rule of no mythical creatures utilized. She's incredible. Would you like a treat, my dear? I have two cauldrons of treats right over here. Help yourself. 
She was very brave to speak to me, and bravery should be rewarded. Mm. Hello, Mim. Oh, Hello, Pain and Panic. Have you come to be mediocre again? <laughs> always, oh, always. That's what Hades told me. Did she insult us? She just roasted us. She insulted us. I didn't say it. Despite the fact that Mad Madam Mim absolutely roasted us, she was awesome. What a cool character. Now we're passing the circle here. They've got Prince Hans of the Southern Isles, Captain Hook. Very cool characters. But we're going to keep moving to the treat trail so that we get everybody done before the parade. Now I gotta say, I love Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. There's definitely good stuff about both events, but I love how they do the characters here. And speaking of characters, as the resident nightmare before Christmas expert of this trio, I'm happy to say we're headed to meet the host of the party, Mr. Oogie Boogie himself. Oogie Boogie's meet and greet is inside the Animation Experience building, and as a fun activity, they have the Animation Academy open and its villain and spooky themed drawings. That would take up 20, 30 minutes of your night, but that's a fun offering if you've got the time or want to sit inside for a little bit. Let's go! Keep it moving! Ooh. <laughs> Now you, my friend, you look like you're in the mood for a batch of my special snake and spider stew. <laughs> well, you know, Molly likes to think herself the nightmare before... Oh, what, what's happening here? Ne never mind whatever I was just saying. What's happening? <clears throat> so, so the slippers are comfy. What a, what a look. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, I know Molly says she was the resident Nightmare Before Christmas expert. I'm sure everything she said about Oogie Boogie was exactly correct. Anyway, um, we only have a couple tree trails left to hit before the end of the night, and one of them is of a fashionista, Cruella de Vil. Now, this may look a little bit different if all you're familiar with is the animated classic. This, of course, is the live action Emma Stone, Cruella DeVille, but the dresses are on display, the music is pumping, one of my favorite soundtracks of a Disney film, and we are hoping to see Cruella herself. The story behind this one. Did you know that this used to be the Baroness? I found it to the second hand shop, my friend Arthur's shop, and I decided to make it better. Yes, that one actually is done. That was the first Headed into the Hyperion Theater for our final treat trail of the evening. I gotta say, you guys, we've been making good time. But here, we're visiting Ernesto de la Cruz from Coco. Recuerden me, though I have to say goodbye. Remember me, don't let it make you cry. Did you like the song? Si! Why did you not then dress as me? I can't hear what you're saying. I think you said, Ernesto, you are so cool. I could not even begin to dress as nicely as you do. Is that... Well, with that, we have uh, absolutely crushed all the tree trails. So efficient, so fast, didn't have any problem seeing all of those characters tonight. Chef's kiss. The last four we saw in 45 minutes. That's how quick they are. Even when the lines look really long, they move really quickly. And if you want to stop and slow down for a little moment, they even had a little waiting area like with Ernesto, you can, but it's just the ideal way to see a bunch of characters. 100%. What were your favorite characters, or what was your favorite character to visit on the tree trails? I, I gotta go Sid, my Toy Story 11 heart thought he was awesome and so creepy and he was perfect yeah i love the vibe of ernesto oh. the music the way it swells he actually will stop and do a song he'll sing remember me uh, but then he'll also engage and interact oh my god the whole thing they're gonna be started on the character himself it's so beautiful, so beautiful. um Marvelous Mad Madam Mim, if for no other reason than you both got roasted. We did, but she was really cool, and she's a character I've never seen oh. before. And also, amazing, amazing, amazing interaction that we saw throughout the entirety of her interactions. Yeah. Just 
wonderful. Every character's been amazing, from look to what they're saying to like everything's been awesome. Um, but we have about 30 minutes till the parade steps off, and we're here in Avengers Campus, so I'm thinking maybe we spot some Avengers, see if we can, and maybe get a little bevy treat. Sounds good. Come in. Peter, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Where's uh, Rocket? Rocket? He's up there. Oh, you're not gonna go help him save Groot? That's your mission. Oh, okay. to make sure Avengers Campus Got it. So we decided to go see Agatha again. It looked really cool in yeah. the Sanctum Santorum. The, the darkness, the dark hold, it looked all cool. And uh, she proceeded to absolutely roast Alan for wearing Santa. First of all, correct. we can't they, show you them because there's no free feed content here. gods and goddesses wore sandals. Yep. Yeah. Wait, were you there? Yes! <laughs> she goes, I can't look away. It's like a traffic accident. <laughs> the fact that apparently men wearing sandals has an ick factor is ridiculous to me. They're so breezy. She just said they were distracting out. Yeah. She didn't say she didn't anything, say about, anything it. about it. Your words, not hers. She said, I can't look away. She goes, are those sandals? <laughs> Hey, it's equal opportunity roasting here at Oogie Boogie Bash. Yeah. We got ours, you get yours. Cruella got me too. I don't even think the camera was on, but Cruella was like, which one of us is on the stage and which one of us is on the ground? That's correct. To me, so. Yeah, here's the deal though. You provoked that. You were like, hey, you should have more glitter. I, yeah, you provoked this by wearing sandals. <laughs> <laughs> I like sandals. I'll just wear them in the comfort of my own home. Yeah. Where would like you what you like. We don't yuck yums here. Apparently, Agatha does. But Agatha well, might. She's a villain. Yeah. Also, we got a nice, tasty bevy, uh, brewskis, and a popping particle punch from him tasting lab. And now we are going to watch the parade, the frightfully fun parade. Now, it steps off all the way in Paradise Gardens by Corndog Castle and has to work all its way through the park and end here by Avengers Campus. So we're at the end of the parade round. So it should be here in about 20 minutes or so. But uh, I'm really excited to see the parade and the Headless Horseman's kicking it off. Woo! Also, I have to say, one difference than Magic Kingdom is the fact that I can have this. True. It feels weird to be at a Halloween party and drinking a beer. Cheers. It's nice, though. Cheers.
complete and we dashed over to Cars Land because one, it's adorable as Radiator screams this time of year, which again, not a full-time Oogie Boogie offering. If you come during the daytime or nights that Oogie Boogie isn't happening, you can see Radiator screams, but we are gonna end our night riding Radiator Springs Racers, which while it doesn't have a full Halloween overlay like the other two attractions in Cars Land, it's got fun Halloween lighting, and this attraction's so great, especially at night anyway, feels like the perfect way to end our evening. That said, we dashed away so quickly, we didn't have time to talk about the parade. Max, what's yeah. your favorite part of this parade? I think I prefer Booty U Grave Diggers over these Grave Diggers. I'll go Jack and Sally. Jack and Sally, a great choice. I wish that Jack and Sally were in the Booty U Parade because people want to see them. Hard set. Alan, favorite part of this parade? I agree fully about the Grave Diggers, that, like Max mentioned. My favorite part has to be the fact that Maleficent's dragon is rep Maleficent as a dragon, rather, is represented at the end of the parade. Also seeing Hades, no bias at all, is really cool to see. Uh, underrepresented, absolutely fabulous villain, and I was happy to see him. For me, I really liked the kickoff. I like the Headless Horseman, and I like that Ichabod Crane shows up. Out in Florida, you've got the Headless Horseman. He trots on through. He's amazing, obviously, but I like that they have Ichabod here. What a fun little addition. Also, now I want to go watch Legends of Sleepy Hollow, not the Johnny Depp version. Boogie Bash comes to an end. It was an almost perfect night, except for we just lost. It's true. The race was lost, but I have to know, it's your all's first time at Oogie Boogie Bash. What are your thoughts? I just think this event is so nice. It's so great to see all the different forms of entertainment, the characters who come out. I am just impressed by the efficiency of how Disneyland does character interactions. Every family is getting just what they need as they pass through that experience, and I love that. I think one of my favorite things is that this is a small little detail, but I love the fact that at the tree trails, you're not just getting candy. They're also giving out sun chips. They're giving apple slices. They're giving goldfish, oh, yeah. which is nice as a little snack. Yeah, I agree with you that the way they do the characters is perfect. Most people don't want a long character interaction, and the fact that you get to walk through and see some really unique characters just for a second is perfect. Yeah, this is an event for people that love characters, I think. If you love characters, especially hard to find characters, this is the event for you. But I'm gonna keep being a broken record and saying I just adore Villains Grove. It's not a character interaction. It's very unique. It's all lights and projection and there's rose smells. And I just think it's such a smart use of that space. And so such a cool element to this event. I also really liked the parade. I do think I like Booty U just a little bit more, but it's still a really fun parade with a lot of fun units, and we had some nice snacks as well. And while Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party can feel more grand, mm -hmm. and I think that's just because of, it's in Magic Kingdom, right? Yeah. The, the space that you're in. And you get fireworks. That as well. Oogie Boogie does a really good job of making every moment feel intimate, mm -hmm. and that's hard to find in the theme park experience. Yeah, I think at most Not So Scaries, you feel a little stressed because you're trying to get everything done and it's very easy to get everything done here. Oh yeah. So it's really easy to love them both. As someone who loves characters, I had a great time at Oogie Boogie, but it's also fun to go to Mickey's Not So Scary and see the bigger parade, the bigger fireworks and the Sanderson stage show. So as a lover of Halloween, I'm glad I got to do both this year. In the meantime, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, 
Follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation about this or any other video, join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. Yeah, definitely let us know which one you prefer, West Coast or East Coast. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Alan. And I'm Max. And it's been spooky. Bye. Remember when Agatha roasted you for having seen <laughs>